It is the Worldwide Sports Radio Network. Radio Network. Radio Network. Presents the bottom line. The Stone Cold Simpson. And so, goodbye. <laughs> and good night. Bang! Settle! Because I'm better than you, and you know it. Yes, sir! To off the mats with Alex Lowe's and Josh Silverberg. All right, everybody. Good afternoon. You are listening and watching us on the Worldwide Sports Radio Network every Saturday at twelve o'clock. Welcome to Off the Mat, where we only talk professional wrestling here. On the Worldwide Sports Radio Network, of course, I'm your host, Josh Silverberg. With me, as always, my tag team partner down south in Florida, Mr. Alex Lowe's. My friend, how are you doing, man? I'm doing well. Uh, we, I'm actually really excited to get into NXT TakeOver. We're going to get into that later in the show. Stick with us the whole way through because we have a s- special guest coming up in the second half of our, of our show. So you do not want to miss that. Should we review the guest or do you want... To wait to reveal the guest, maybe I would wait to reveal. That's all right. So we will wait to reveal the guest. So that's why you're gonna have you're gonna want to stay tuned to that one. It's a very good one. Also, please do not forget as well. There are so many different platforms you can watch and listen to us every Saturday. Not just our show, but other programs here on the Worldwide Sports Radio Network, such as the Wise Guys, Below the Mic, Caged in MMA. Down to the Wire, the BS Sports Show, the Ryan Hickey Show, uh, trying to do the, the New York Jets podcast. So much going on here at the Worldwide Sports Radio Network. You can tell your speakers, your smart speakers, to play uh, the Worldwide Sports Radio Network. You can download our free app. All you have to do is type it in on the Apple Store. Or if you have an iPhone or if you have an Android on the Google Play Store, just type in WWSRN. That's WWSRN. It is free. You can also go to the Worldwide Sports Radio Network.com. Check us out on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Periscope. You name it, we're on it. YouTube. We are all over the place, and we're only getting bigger each and every single week. Ha! Ah, that was a mouthful, so that was good. We got all that out of the way. But no, it's true, though. We are growing. Alex, you know this. You know, we, we have some amazing content here on the Worldwide Sports Radio Network. So it's not just uh, off the mat. If you like other sports uh, shows, if you like other sports, period, you could check those out as well. It's not just wrestling here. We have everything going on. So let's get into it right now, Alex. Of course, we're also going to preview, as you said, we're going to preview SummerSlam in a few minutes. This will be the first time, by the way. And I believe off the mat's history, Definitely. we are discussing WWE on the show. I don't think we've ever no, discussed. No, we w- we have not discussed WWE yet as a, as a, the main brand Raw and SmackDown. No, and that's why you know that's why um, Alex decided to go with the Rock shirt today. I guess for the theme of it, and then of course for me, I got Drew McIntyre, Kevin Owens behind me, and of course I have my my lovely Bray Wyatt shirt. I think I have different Bray Wyatt shirts for all of his characters. That's how good he is. But let's begin with, it's kind of weird to say this. Let's begin with previewing tonight as well. There's a lot happening tonight. You have oh, yeah. Dynamite. Yeah. We're going to get to NXT TakeOver 30 after our interview in the second half. But we're going to preview AEW Dynamite and we're going to recap NXT. So, Alex, you, we'll start with AEW first. You have a lot to, we have a lot to digest with that. You have uh, the Elite versus the Dark Order. Actually, really quick, Alex, what is the Facebook and the Twitter and the phone number that the fans can reach? So the Facebook page for us is off the mat WWSRN, same for Twitter. And then our phone line is 727-888-4295. We we would love to hear all you fans. We've been doing great. We've been, Alex, I know it's been posting the viewership and it's only getting better and better. So, Sorry about that, Alex. I want to get the fans involved as much as possible. 
So you have the Elite versus the Dark Order tonight. You had the Lucha Brothers uh, and the Butcher and the Blade going up against Jurassic Express and the Natural Nightmares. You have FTR versus Cody, Cody versus Brody Lee for the TNT Championship. Yep, that's another one. Darby Allen's in action. Orange Cassidy's going to have his first ever interview, and Sammy Guevara confronts Matt Hardy. So it seems to be they're going after last week's tag team celebration. They have three tag team matches on the card tonight alone, and everything like that. So going into it, and of course you said Brody Lee versus Cody tonight for the TNT Championship, which should be interesting. Alex, what's your thoughts going into tonight's AEW episode? I think this AEW episode for tonight is going to be very well done. I have high hopes for how it's going to turn out because I feel like Cody versus Brody Lee is going to be the match that really catches people on catches their eye. And um, uh, Brody Lee said, if you saw his promo from last week, Brody Lee is not messing around. He wants to dethrone the champion Cody and take the, become the new TNT champion for as the leader of the Dark Order. So I think Cody has to really chip it in gear, be focused going into this match, really know what Brody Lee is going to throw at him because Brody Lee, he's a he's a very tough individual in the ring. He he can catch you off guard at any moment and he he's very well he's very good at catching he knows when you're going to throw like what I'm trying to say is is um Brody Lee knows all of his opponent's moves almost, so he knows when exactly somebody's going to throw their finisher, and he's going to try and catch Cody off guard and really, really try to take advantage of take advantage of his, of the match and what's going to happen in the match. So I'm looking forward to that, and then I'm looking I'm also looking forward to FTR Cash Wheeler and Dax Harwood versus Private Party. Because Private Party has been, they've been doing a great job in AEW so far as a tag team. Um, there's a lot that they have done as as a team, and I'm really looking forward to see what kind of what how much they're going to be prepared and what they're look what they are going into. What can you help me with this, Josh? Yeah, I got you. I got I'm a you. bit I'm a bit rusty today because it's, it's 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 I'm tired. It's it's been a long week. <laughs> you had school started, so don't worry about it. So pretty much, I get what you're completely saying, Alex. You're basically saying that you're curious with the way the match is going. To yeah, play, the build up spin. And that Brody Lee took the old TNT Championship, I believe. Right? I think you took the championship. Yeah, he took he the old it. TNT and kind of pitched motion yeah, to that. And, and you're talking about FTR versus Private Party, and you're looking. And you know, I agree with you 100. percent I think we're looking forward to the fact that it's two completely different styles. Yeah, like private, private Party has a a way yeah. different complete tag team style than FTR and da- Dax Harwood and Cash Wheeler, and they've also have Matt Hardy mentoring them, so that's good for them because Matt Hardy is part of one of the most legendary tag teams in the wrestling business, the Hardy Boys, with his brother Jeff Hardy. So Private Party really has a great a great person behind them to help them climb the ladder in the tag team division. Absolutely. For sure. And uh, I'm curious to see how the Lucha Bros and the Butcher and Blade versus Jurassic Express and the Natural Nightmares is, uh, you know, you look at, you look at FTR and like I said, private party. I'm excited about that. I, I want to see what Darby Allen does next. He put up a great fight against John Moxley. Yeah, that was incredible. Uh, it was a great, Match. And then, of course, Orange, Ca- Orange Cassidy with his um, first interview. So, um, for, you know, we are running close to time. So we do want to give NXT its due because, again, we have yeah. our interview late. We want to get it. We got a lot let's, to cover. Oh, let's get to what NXT with ha- everything happened. This is the last NXT. Uh, t- Before uh, that- TakeOver 30. 30. Of course, you know, and. What I really I, I want to address the situation because I knew people were gonna yeah ch- it was it was yeah. a a storm online on Twitter Facebook on social media it, it was just a complete mess specifically specifically people on the Worldwide Sports Show Network on their comment page they didn't take shots at me which I knew and Alex I told you that that was gonna happen they were basically saying innocent till proven guilty yeah they- uh, I. 
and I and and I basically backed up my statement when I said, look, there were com- there were pictures that were posted of his chat that we were, we're talking about Velveteen Dream situation, um, everything like that. Listen, I love Velveteen Dream as much as the next person, but the sense of the, the fact of the matter is this: those pictures came out. Were they fake? I hope they were. I hope they weren't real because Velveteen Dream is a big star in his business. At the same time, I just thought. Finn Balor should have been the one to take the to take the reins. Personally, I don't think Velveteen Dream or Finn Balor should even have been in the match. I, I I would have been fine with Timothy Thatcher being in the match. Get some, and again, I keep saying it. Let's develop some get new some stars. new faces. Get some new new caliber new, stars. Yeah, absolutely. Get some new blood in here. Now tonight, you're going to get Timothy Thatcher versus Finn Balor at Takeover 30, which we'll preview later. Which I'm excited about that match for sure. Uh, but Velveteen Dream won. And Johnny Gargano won his match, so they ran up the field. They ran up the field with uh, Damian Priest, Bronson Reed, and, and then, um, then we had the going... segment between Pat McPhee and Adam Cole, which really got heated very quick. Yeah, Pat McAfee really came off as a listen. The guy's a football punter. I'm not disputing, and that's no pun intended, by the way, with the undisputed era when I said that. <laughs> That's not disputing that the guy could talk on the mic. Um, his mic works was fantastic during that segment. I thought it was great. I thought it worked well. The thing of it is, too, is that Adam Cole, I really believe, is going to have to carry the load in this match because Pat McAfee, now we don't know. Listen, this could have been a buildup for two or three months, and he could have been, he says, I've only been training for two weeks. He could have been training for two or three months for this match. You know, that's really what it comes down to. And it's kind of weird because Adam Cole, when you think about it, is kind of like the face in this match. But I thought the segment was phenomenal. Uh, it definitely it was. was. It came off. It came off very strong. I enjoyed that segment a hundred percent. And I believe Adam Cole. It's it's like going back to the statement that you were saying for uh, Pat McPhee he, when he said he trained in two weeks. Adam Cole didn't just become a wrestler in two weeks, unlike Pat McPhee. It took him years, and he fought and clawed to get to where he is now. And come Saturday, this is going to be a physical and brutal match in many ways possible. And Pat McPhee better be focused and ready and and ready to rise up to the challenge. Yeah, for sure. I think Pat McAfee definitely is, uh, you know, somebody that when you look at Alex, I know you're not a big football guy. Uh, I, I'm a big football guy, so I know Pat McAfee very well. Listen, the guy is a blunt, trash talking dude that is a rah rah guy in the locker room. If you saw what he did a couple of years ago in Nashville during the NFL draft, he basically insulted the Tennessee Titans fans um, on the stage. It was quite funny, actually. But that's who Pat McAfee is. If you see McAfee's show, his podcast, that's what he does. He just insults, he riles you up, gets you hyped. And, you know, I'm I'm curious to see where they go with this uh, tonight. But, again, we'll, we'll preview that later. But, I, you know, the other thing that I, I'm curious with that I saw, the Dakota Kai, Io Shirai stuff was interesting. I'm excited about this match. I really hope that, again, Raquel Gonzalez doesn't really get, you know, you know her role is going to take place in this match some sort of way but I hope it doesn't take too much into it. So we'll see uh, going forward with that. And then, of course, you have Johnny Gargano also getting into the takeover. I mean, look, you can't have a takeover without Johnny Johnny wrestling. No. At the same time, I don't think he should win the match. But uh, the one underrated thing, too, that we didn't discuss, I thought what that was really good was the package. The package of Karrion Cross and Keith Lee. I thought the video package was one of the best video packages they'd done in quite some time. And to me, it, it, it flowed well. It flowed well. It looked great. It was produced extremely well. And, the, you know, the thing about WWE is they always produce really well. Their production team is top notch. It's one of the best in, in, in the business. You know what I mean? So for... For them, it, it it all comes down to really how the video package looked, and it looked like five stars, in my opinion, Alex. Yeah, it, it really did. And going back to the ladder match, uh, I believe it's going to come down to two or three people. It's going to come down to Cameron Grimes, Bronson Reed, and Damian Priest. 
So I believe it's going to be those three guys that are going to be the last ones to come at each other in the ladder match. And I believe Bronson Reed really has a chance to rise to rise to the occasion in this ladder match because he's waited years and years in his career to get to this pivotal moment in time. And if Bronson Reed can pull it off, he will be the North American champion. And it's 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 I cannot wait for this ladder match. It's going to be exciting. There's we got a lot of new new blood, fresh faces in a ladder match this year, and that's what I like about NXT Takeover 30 this year. And it's 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 going to be interesting. I cannot. It's going to be one of those fights where it's going to be exciting. It's going to be intense. There's going to be a lot of physicality, and uh, we're just going to see everybody bolting to grab that championship off the off the top of the ladder. And I believe Damian Priest has a chance to put on his best performance in this ladder match. And Cameron Grimes Cameron Grimes has a chance to to become champion because as he said he's gonna try and take it straight to the moon. And I, I'm looking I'm looking to this match is definitely gonna be probably between eight out of ten Nine out of ten, somewhere around there. Yeah, for sure. Also, just really quick, um, we're not going to be able to get to our this week in wrestling. Um, I know we don't have enough time to do that this week. So no. I just want to let everybody know that we will not be doing that this week, but that's okay. So let's get to our next segment, Alex. Let's preview it. Let's preview SummerSlam for tomorrow night. And, you know, there's a couple of, th- you know, I actually got to watch. Um, SmackDown yesterday. I watched it yesterday, so it was interesting for sure. So let's get into it. We'll start with um, Drew McIntyre versus Randy Orton. I was going to say start with the lower matches first. Lower match, yeah. Yeah. So let's do the tag team match first. Let's do the Street Profits versus Andrade and Angel Garza for the Raw Tag Team Championship. I've seen this story built up the last few weeks. It's been fascinating. Look. I, Zelina Vega, I'm a big fan of her. I think she's done well as the ballet for this group. I think this group is slowly deteriorating, though, at the same time. I think they might want to be breaking it up. Um, but we'll see. But I'm gonna, So I'm going to go with the uh, Street Profits in this one. I agree with you. The Street Profits, I'm going to go with them as well. I, they have done a, an amazing job in this storyline the past few weeks against Andrade and Angel Garza. And Angel Garza and Andrade... They have a chance to succeed in the near future as single competitors rather than heel tag team champions. And it's, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be a struggle for Selena Vega to regain control of these two guys and really rein them back as a tag team. And there has been some communication miscommunication between the two leads of the Street Profits and eventually dropping the titles to a more established team. But I don't think that's going to happen. I think uh, the Street Profits are going to stick with the Raw Tag Team titles for a little bit, at least a little while until a bigger, stronger, more in-depth tag team comes along. Sure. Absolutely. I think, like I said, I think the tag team division, there's there's good tag teams on WWE. The problem is they don't utilize them the correct way. That's always a bit. Next up, a very bland match that I'm not looking forward to, although I think he has improved dramatically, and that's Apollo Crews. I think he's really done a great job the last few months. His mic work has done has gotten better. I have absolutely no interest in seeing him versus MVP. I don't even know why MVP is in this match. It makes no sense to me. Uh, I think the whole thing is just a, it's a very wonky, random, put-together match. So, for me... I'll go with Apollo Crews in this one, but again, I have absolutely no interest in seeing this match going forward. Yeah, I agree with you. I, I, I don't have really any interest in this feud going forward, but I feel like Apollo Crews is going to be the one to take the victory and retain the United States Championship. And this goes back to a show I was watching earlier on in the week, the Hall of Fame with Booker T., and uh, Booker T had some really good points. He he said Apollo Cruz has really done a great job with his mic work. He's improving, and he's getting better to where he can really catch the attention of the fans and keep it going. And uh, I believe Cruz 
it, he has a ch- it's it's like what what uh, Booker T said. He has a chance to really show everybody what he can do in the squared circle at, at, with his mic work and, and and his ring work as a combo. So it's 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 going to be one of those matches where we can see Apollo Cruz rise up as a top individual in the wrestling in the wrestling in WWE. Yeah, we'll see about that for sure. I mean, they've been waiting for a while for that, so we'll see if that happens. Uh, next up, we have Mandy Rose versus Sonya Deville, and they changed your they changed your match, Alex. I know you didn't want to see the hair versus hair. Match no, I did I- not. I I thought that was going to be a complete disaster. You get a no disqualification, loser leaves WWE match, which we all know one of them. I mean, maybe Sonya gets some time off because of what happened with the whole stalker situation. So maybe they want to give her a little bit of time off, possibly. Uh, I think Sonya Deville is going to be the one that wins, though, and I think it's going to affect Otis's Money in the Bank briefcase, where basically I think what they could do, and hear me out on this one, Alex, really quick. I think this could be a very good idea. What they could do is they can have Sonya Deville win the match. Mandy has to leave WWE. Otis then begs Ma- Sonya to let Mandy back in the WWE. Sonya says, sure, just give me the Money in the Bank briefcase, and I'll let her back in the WWE. That could be a story that they go down with, and I think that could be an idea that they think they can run with. Look, I think the whole Mandy Otis thing has been so stupid. Um, I'm sorry. I know a lot of WWE people love Otis. I'm not an Otis guy. I'm sorry. I think it's uh, him winning the money in the bank was so silly. I think it was ridiculous. Um, I hated it. I hate how they're giving him pretty much this ginormous push when I watch Otis, and I don't think he could be a – a face of a brand in my opinion that's just my opinion on it but i think sonya deville is going to be the one that wins it and i think that's the route they should go definitely i agree with you and uh i believe that's a great route to go and have uh have that whole story have a new package storyline come along as as the way you were explaining it and um I I I definitely think Sonya Deville is going to win this match. She has a great ring ability. She has some martial arts background. Um she can really throw her opponent off guard. And there's a lot of things that she can really do take her opponent to the outside floor and really use the ring use the outside ring to her advantage. And and uh Mandy Rose is going to have to be very careful with that and really watch her opponent at all times. Stay focused on her as much as he as much as she can because we don't, I I don't think uh Otis should be involved in this matchup. I think he should be in the back because if he comes out, it's going to cause a Mandy Rose to get distracted and that's going to cause uh Sonya Deville to get the upper hand. Uh- I think, too, I think it's a matter of this. I think Sonya Deville needs to be one of the faces of the women's division. I think she's highly talented. Her mic work is is incredible. So that's something they, they need to take advantage of. Yeah, definitely. I could see I could see her really becoming the face of the women's division sometime very soon. Absolutely. Now, next up, we have Dominic Mysterio going up against Seth Rollins in a street fight. Now, while it's cool that Dominic Mysterio is wrestling – um, there are there were reports in the works that he had been training in the in the performance center for the last few I think the last few months or even years I think it was. Uh, this storyline's been interesting and it's actually kind of interesting because our special guest coming up later on had a kind of a a, a small role. Alex, I don't know if you knew this. He had a small role in the uh, in this rivalry. So I'm gonna I'm gonna ask about that later in the second half with 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 our guest, but. You know, to me, I think it's going to be uh, – I think Seth Rollins should be the winner. Do I know? No, I don't. I, I have no idea who's going to win. Uh, you know, this story to me has just gone on a little too long. But, I mean, I, I'll pick Seth Rollins. Why not? <clears throat> I'm going to have to go with Dominic Mysterio because of uh, Booker T's statement on his show. Uh, Dominic Mysterio has a chance to really – uh, continue the legacy of his dad, Ray Mysterio, and really become a big name in the sports entertainment industry and in WWE. And this is his chance and moment to really show everybody that he can hang with somebody like Seth Rollins in the squared circle and 
Uh, he's gonna. Ha- I think Dominic Mysterio is really going to have to be 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 focused and try and bring out the best he can in this match. And I know Booker T said that Dominic Mysterio is probably going to be very nervous going into a pay per view like this because this will be his first pay per view match. So it, it's 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 going to be one of those things where. Dominic Mysterio can do very well, or he's going to have to really learn back, learn from Seth Rollins, and really uh, adapt a bit more. All right, Alex, we got to fast forward a little bit because we're running close to time here. So, Sasha Banks versus Asuka and Bailey versus Asuka. Prediction: Does Asuka win both titles? Does she win one title? Does she maybe, win either? maybe one title? Yeah, yeah. Which one do you think she wins? Uh, I see the SmackDown Women's Title. I could see her winning that one. Okay, so you see her being Bailey. All right, and Sasha Banks retaining. All right, so let's get to our last two matches. I know we have to do this quick because we're running close on the time. Drew uh, Drew McIntyre versus Randy Orton. For me, I'm going to go with McIntyre. You can see the shirt behind me, and Alex, you know this about me. I'm one of the bigger McIntyre fans out there. I think he's really taken the bull by the horns during this pandemic and really ran with it. And he's just become one of the faces of the brand. He's a guy that his mic skills have become gotten so much better from where it once was. He is an unbelievable champion. He puts out really good matches. So for me, I'm going to go with Drew in this one. I think it's going to be an excellent match. I'm going to go with Randy Orton because of how he's really become an absolute heater in WWE right now as a heel. And he's he. Uh, they brought back the red, the legend killer, which I really like. We've seen Randy Orton use the punt multiple times, and this this side of Randy Orton is very aggressive, very very animal like, very dangerous, and that's what I like about this side of Randy Orton. And I think he's going to bring out the that, that side of him against Drew McIntyre. And uh, Drew McIntyre, I know he's going to be very focused and aware. He's going to know when that punt kick's coming. And he's probably going to counter it into the Claymore kick. And that's probably how the match is going to end. But I think Randy Orton is going to bring out his best performance in this match. And that Randy Orton is one of those guys that is very, very well known in WWE. He's been with WWE for years. He's won multiple champions, multiple championships, but I don't think he. I, 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 maybe, maybe he has a chance to beat Drew McIntyre and become the new WWE champion because we haven't seen him hold the WWE title in a while. Yeah. So maybe, maybe possibly, possibly that could happen. I All right, Alex, so we got we got to get to a break in another minute or so. So let's do this really quick one. Uh, Bray Wyatt versus Braun Strowman. Who you got? Really quickly. Uh, Bray Wyatt because of the uh, cinematic matches. Those have been very, very well done. I love what WWE is doing with those. With the and, Thunder and everything, yeah. Yeah, and Bray Wyatt's really gotten into the head of uh, Braun Strowman a lot. So Braun Strowman, uh, I, I think he has a chance to win, but I don't see it happening because Bray Wyatt has a lot up his sleeve, and he's going to do a lot of different things in the next match. For sure. I'm going to go really quickly. I'm going to go Bray Wyatt. And the reason being is he wasn't supposed to lose the championship in the first place because before the pandemic, they wanted Goldberg to win and face. Uh, I forget who did, who was Goldberg supposed to face at. Uh, I forget who he was supposed to face. I forget who it was too, yeah. Mania. He was supposed to face some. I forget. I got to remember who was at WrestleMania. He was supposed to face somebody. I think it might have been Braun, possibly. So they wanted the Goldberg to wrestle. And. Bray's going to get the championship back, in my opinion, and I'm being a little biased because he's one of my favorites. So I'm going to go Bray Wyatt in this one for sure. All right. When we come back, we are going to an early break today, but that's the reason being is because we got a big special guest, our first ever special guest coming up on our show. It's exciting. Not to mention, we're also going to preview TakeOver 30 tonight, and we're going to get to our finishing move. You're going to want to stick with us here on Off The Mat. This is the Worldwide Sports Radio Network. We'll be right back. It's the Worldwide Sports Radio Network. Radio Network. Radio Network. Everybody's got a price. Rest in peace. 
Welcome back to Off the Mat with Alex Lowe's and Josh Silverberg. All right, everybody, we're back. Welcome back to the second <laughs> half of Off the Mat here on the Worldwide Sports Radio Network, joining you every Saturday at 12 p.m. Please don't forget, check us out on all of our platforms, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Periscope. Uh, we have our own free app. All right, so you're going to want to type in WWSRN to the Apple Store. If you have an iPhone, if you have an Android, go to the Google Play Store, WWSRN. Check out all the different shows, content. If you miss our show, you can rewatch it. Of course, Alex uh, you know, has the Twitter and Facebook information as well. Really quick, Alex, to follow us here on Off the Mat. What is it again? It's Off the Mat, WWSRN. You can follow us on Twitter and Facebook. And then okay. our and then our cell phone number is seven two seven eight 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 four two nine five. Awesome, awesome, Alex. Uh, thumbs up. Do we have our guest on the line? Unfortunately, not. I I called him. Uh, didn't get anything back. So unfortunately, I'm sorry, guys. We can't get our guest this week. Oh, oh, that's okay. That's all right. Don't worry about it. No worries at all. So you know what we're gonna do? Well, you just go right to this week in it- wrestling history week in wrestling history that's all right alex don't worry about it so for this one we have wwf SummerSlam 1999 at the target center in minneapolis minnesota attendance was 17,370 this was a pay-per-view and we had the first match was jeff jarrett versus d'lo brown for the wwf european title and intercontinental wait no inter- international title and it jeff was an international yeah, there was an international title, apparently. And then Jeff Jarrett defeated D'Lo Brown for both of those titles. Then we had Christian and Edge di- versus Matt Hardy and Jeff Hardy in a tag team turmoil match. Then Christian and Edge defeated... Yeah, they defeated the Hardy Boys. Then we had number three on that match. Christian and Edge defeats Midian and Visera of the Ministry of Darkness tag team turn- tor- turmoil match. Number four was Christian and Edge defeat Draws and Prince Albert in another tag team turmoil. Bradshaw and Farouk, the APA, defeat Christian and Edge in a tag team turmoil match. Bradshaw and Farouk defeat Crash Holly and Hardcore Holly in a tag team turmoil. Al Snow defeats Big Boss Man for the Hardcore Championship. Ivory, the the, uh, women's champion at the time, defeated Tori. Uh, Ken Shamrock defeated Steve Blackman for the Lions in a Lions Den weapons match. Test defeated Shane McMahon in a Love Her or Leave Her match. <laughs> the Big Show and Undertaker defeated Kane and X Pac for the WWF Tag Team Titles. Uh, Billy Gunn defeated uh, The Rock defeated. Billy Gunn in a kiss my you know what match because we're not gonna we're gonna keep it PG. Uh, Mankind defeated Steve Austin and Triple H, and the referee was Jesse Ventura in a triple threat match for the WWF World Heavyweight Title. So this was when 1998, 99, nine. Yeah, that whole, whole uh, lover lever idea sounds like a Vince Russo thing. So <laughs> that's interesting. Um. So this was SummerSlam '99, so that was the Attitude Era. Okay, I mean the card sounds okay. Yeah, the I mean, card does it. sound a bit uh, very decent. We had my favorite match that I see on this list has to be Edge and Christian versus Matt Hardy and Jeff Hardy. Okay, well it's actually kind of a change. You know, now that we have some time now, we can actually extend. Uh, do we want to just really quickly? Do we want to get more into the Bray Wyatt Braun Strowman match since we have a little bit more time now? Because we kind of did that, I think, a little too quickly. Yeah, we can talk more about that and then get into NXT Takeover. Yeah. We can get into our next segment, which will be a preview of Takeover Thirty. But we do have some time, and we do apologize that we couldn't get the guest on this week. But that's okay. We hopefully we'll be able to get uh, them on at some point but that's okay it happens but in the radio business and the broadcasting business you just gotta play with the cards you have and definitely exactly so you know we didn't really get to touch on it 
so Bray Wyatt, Braun Strowman, we gave you our prediction who we think is going to win. We both have Bray Wyatt. And the reason why I didn't really get to say why is because if you got to watch the storyline, if you got to watch the this stuff yesterday, it was kind of interesting. First off, let's talk about the Thunderdome a little bit and the idea of the Thunderdome by the WWE, which is actually right near your backyard, Alex. It's yeah, in Orlando. it's uh, Orlando, so, like, right by Winter Park. In, uh, and it's you, right hold by- on, really? Yeah, the, are you? Did you see the AEW announcement where they're going to let fifteen percent capacity go back to the um, to, to the uh, Daly's place? Yeah, I saw that earlier this week, and that's pretty interesting because it's going to be ten to fifteen percent capacity, and they're not going to these people are not going to be seated together. They're going to be seated separately and like apart in different rows, and they're going to do temperature. Uh, they're going to do temperature checks. And then they're going to do like a little questions, a question survey to make sure that you haven't come, haven't come in contact with anyone that has COVID or recently had COVID. Now, I only ask Alex why about this. And we're going to go back to the brain brawn thing. I just thought of it in my head. I didn't want to lose it. I asked Alex this is because Alex lives near Tampa, Florida. So Alex is not far from. No, I'm not far from Daly's place, but it's about from here where I live. It's about three, four, four and a half hour drive. Are you going to, are you, I'm just curious, are you going to go to any of the shows or are you just going to watch them? Uh, I'm just going to watch it on TV for now because I, I don't want to risk it, you know. It's, yeah, it makes sense. I mean, like, like I said, and I think the whole Thunderdome thing, I think the way WWE's doing it, look, again, and I said it earlier, their production team is out of this world good. It's unbelievably talented group of people that run the production team. I think it's a nice little different idea, you know, because again, AEW has been in an arena where WWE had been in the performance center since March. So this case of, you know, going to the Amway center where the, where the, um, I think the Orlando magic play. So I think it kind of makes it a little different. It's nicer. Yeah, it does. It's nicer. It's cleaner. There's. Well, I don't think about it being cleaner. I no, think it's. I, well, let me rephrase that. I think it's just. I like the idea. You know how they have all those people on those Zoom? They have like a screen surrounding the ring where there's. Uh, people can watch fr- from their Zoom. And... I think they should do it the way WWE does. I think they should do it the way the NBA does it, where everybody looks like they're in the same chair. Because the problem is. That's the only problem I have with it. Is because with the NBA. They all have the same background, which is a chair. You just see their heads. Yeah, you which, just see it. You're seeing a bunch of green screens and different screen colors, and it's throwing me off. Eventually, somebody's going to be an idiot probably and moon the camera. You know, that's probably going to happen. Yeah, it's, you know, that's something I mean, WWE has to be really careful about. I don't. I mean, look, I don't think it's going to happen, but that's why they should not do like a full body one. Just do like what the NBA does, like up to the head and have the same background. Because I feel like when one person has a black screen, one person has a green screen, one person has a blue screen, it makes it kind of confusing. And it, yeah, it does. Too many colors for me, and it's and just, then it throws the competitors off. It throws the uh, wrestlers off in the ring who are yeah. having their match. But really quick, before we preview Takeover Thirty, Alex, um, we didn't get to dive into the Bray Wyatt Braun Strowman match that much, and I like where they're. I mean, look, I'm interested in the story. I hate it. two weeks ago. I hated the ending. With the Braun Bray stuff, with Alexa getting body slammed, I, I thought it was stupid, quite honestly. But this past week was interesting with the whole ambulance and him coming out of the ambulance. I thought that was cool. Uh, um, I, I like where they're I don't look. I think Bray Wyatt is one of those characters where he could play any role, but it's interesting. I forget which – who was it? It was on the Stone Cold podcast. I'm trying to remember – who said it? I think it, I don't remember who it was, but somebody said the Stone Cold. There are certain wrestlers you don't need to give the championship to. Like they don't need them. They could be, be their character. Like Bray Wyatt doesn't need a championship to no. define his character. Bray Wyatt is awesome, and people love his character with the yeah, he's and great. You know, he's just one of those guys that you know. And like when he won the championship, I was like, uh. Eh. I don't think they should have given it to him. I don't think he needed it. I don't think it was kind of – and then he lost to Goldberg because they wanted a bigger name at WrestleMania this year for Tampa because Tampa – you know, and Alex, you notice, Tampa's not really a big tourist no, city. No, no, we're like not. 
York. It's not LA. It's not Chicago. It's not any of those cities. So they're trying to get as many big names on the card as possible, a la John Cena, a la Goldberg, Undertaker, to get the fans to Raymond James. Yeah. I'm sad to And now, see, I don't think Mania is going to happen in LA next year. I don't. I still think it's good. I don't know where it's going to happen. Um, I don't think it's going to be in LA next year. I think they're going to push that back too, and they'll probably give it to Raymond James because, um, you know, Florida is a as is allowing a lot more to be done uh, than other states are. So we'll see. But look, I think Bray Wyatt doesn't need the championship. Do I think he's going to win tomorrow? I do. So yeah. Uh, any last thoughts on that, Alex? Or um, my we- last thoughts on the. Uh- Bray Wyatt versus Braun Strowman. I love how Bray Wyatt has adapted in his character the past two, three years. Like he went from he went from the Wyatt family, Bray Wyatt, to a a darker side of Bray Wyatt, and now to the fiend Bray Wyatt. So I like how his character has evolved in that timeline, and I love what he's doing with his character of the fiend. I think it's amazing to see him ad- use that character often. And I love how he's pitching two different sides of himself. We got this Bray Wyatt, uh, kind of Blue's Clues Bray Wyatt little thing. There. Yeah, it's, no, it's, it's Mr. Rogers. Yeah, Mr. Rogers type of thing there. And then we have the Fiend Bray Wyatt. So it's kind of it kind of reminds me of Finn Balor a little bit because we have... Uh, Finn Balor, just the um the the prince, Prince Finn Balor, and then we have the the um uh, the demon Finn Balor. So that's yeah. what it reminds me of very much. Well, actually, I'm gonna go a step further. I mean, Finn Balor's a good one. I would say Mick Foley because Mick Foley had three faces of Foley with Mankind, You Love, and Cactus Jack, and I think that this guy has been able to really develop into all of his in his characters and he takes it really well and everything like that. So, but quick, uh, little nugget. I was at the debut of the fiend. I was actually at the show at the Coliseum when he beat up Finn Balor last year. So I was at that show. Um, let's get to take over 30. That's tonight. All right. We have five matches and we have a pre-show match. Yep. So it's the just- pre-show match is, uh, it's a, a number one contendership tag team match between Prezango, Legato Fel Dantasma, and then I forget who the third. Oh, per- yeah, th- Danny Birch. Yeah. Um. So I'll I'll go first with it. For me, I will. I, I I'm gonna say. Bah, 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 bah. Hmm. I'll go with Tony Lark and Danny Birch tonight because they haven't really had a fight yet with. Um, Imperium with Fabian Eichner and Marcel Bartel. They haven't gotten that fight yet. I don't know if Legato Del Fantasio, you're going to have two heels in a match then. That would be kind of awkward. But then again, who knows? You had the Undisputed Era versus Imperium a few weeks ago. So you had two heel groups there. But I'll stick with only Larkin and Danny Burch as the team tonight that wins in that, in that match. <clears throat> I'm going to go with Legato Del Fantasma because they've really done an amazing job as as heels in NXT. We've seen week after week uh we, um what's his name? I forget the, the leader the leader's name. I'm, I'm trying to think of it right now. Um I know what you're talking about. I forget his name. I, hmm. Let me see if I can get it really quick. Uh Hold on a he's the, he's the NXT he's the NXT cruiserweight champion right now, yeah. and um, I he's done an amazing job leading this team and uh, really really they've done an amazing job develop development wise, and I like how this team has been very aggressive and just really taking out most of the tag teams in the NXT division right now, but the only tag teams that they haven't come face to face with is undisputed era and, and, Escobar, and, Alex. and Imperium. Sorry. Except Santos Escobar. Santos Escobar. Yeah. So Santos Escobar has really done an amazing job of leading this team. And it's, I, I would love to see uh, uh, Santos Escobar and Legado del Fantasma take on Imperium. I think that would be a great a great entertaining match because they have similar move styles 
And there's a lot we could see them do in that match. There's a, a, a ton that could happen in that match. But if I had to choose between Legato del Fantasma and Imperium, I would pick Imperium over Legato del Fantasma because Imperium has done an amazing job as a tag team uh, in the last last couple months. Um, they've been on NXT UK with Walter, and uh, I love their entrance. Their entrance, their entrance always gets me. Uh, just, just, just the music always gets me. It's it's very catchy. It, it keeps you, it keeps you in line with with their with the competitors, and I'm very very much excited about this match for sure. All right, uh, we're running close on time again. I didn't realize what time it was already, so we got to kind of. Yeah, we got to pick speed on through. We got, and then yeah. the next match, Keith Lee versus Karrion Cross with Scarlet. Hold on, I was gonna say you're gonna jump. I was gonna say we still have a few. We have time to preview some of the other matches if you want to so yeah i don't think we need to jump to the main event that quickly no but we could do do uh, finn Balor versus timothy thatcher really quick and i think yeah he's gonna win i think he as a bright you know i think he would be the perfect guy to win this match in itself uh he would be the next guy for the north american championship yeah timothy thatcher definitely in the the months that the months from when he's day from the months from a couple months to where he debuted, I think he's really done an amazing job. And I like how they're showing him in the promos of his, uh, of teaching these people how to submit opponents. I think that's very interesting to see like that side of Timothy Thatcher and how aggressive he can be and how he can really go to work on different body parts. And it reminds me so much of different wrestlers like, um, like Zack Sabre Jr. reminds me of him a bit because of how much he likes to wear down the body. And I think Timothy Thatcher is going to try and do that against Finn Balor. All right. And uh, Finn Balor Balor is going to have to outsmart, outwit, and try and get around Timothy Thatcher in this match. All right. Io Shirai versus Dakota Kai. Quickly, Alex, who and why? Uh, I'm going to say Dakota Kai because... Uh, I like the side we've seen uh, seen of her so far. Um, I like how 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 her mic work has been, and I like how she is pitching aggressiveness in her mic in her uh, promos. And but I really don't think she needs her. I forget who's who was with her on the next. Miss Michelle Gonzalez, you said. Raquel Gonzalez. Ra- Ra- Raquel Gonzalez. Yeah, I don't think she really needs her backing her in this women's match. I think Dakota Kai could do it very much alone against Io Shirai because she has a great move set. She has that uh that kick, that punt kick that she always goes to in the corner. And then she has a lot of submit submission moves, uh finishing moves, signature moves. So I really think Dakota Kai has a chance to beat Io Shirai in this matchup. Right. And it's going to take a lot of work from Io Shirai to knock her off balance because Dakota Kai has a really good stance. If you've seen all of her, if you've seen all of her matches, she's very well able to keep herself balanced in tough, tough, uh, hit, hard hitting matches like these. Uh, yeah, for sure. I'm going to go. I, I'm going to go quickly. Mine's going to take two. I'm just going to go Io Shirai. I think she's going to continue to be. The face of the NXT Women's Division, I think she's earned it. It would be too quickly for her to lose. All right, the ladder match. Bronson Reed, Damian Priest, Cameron Grimes, Johnny Gargano, Velveteen Dream. For me, I'm going to go out of the box. I'm going to say Cameron Grimes. I think he's had some momentum leading up to this week, so I'm going to go hit him. I'm going to go with Bronson Reed because of the performances I've seen, uh, his matches in the past couple weeks, the matches I've seen him in. He has done very, very well, and, and he's done an amazing job. And uh, yeah, yeah, he's done. So uh, he's done some really crazy things in these matchups, and I'm really looking forward to see. I, I would love to see Bronson Reed become the new North American champion because he has become one of these very well uh, known stars in NXT. And I cannot wait to see how that comes full circle. Yep. All right. So we got two more matches quickly. This is going to be we're gonna, Adam Cole, Pat McAfee. I'm going to go. 
I'm going to say Adam Cole wins it, but it wouldn't shock me if Pat McAfee wins the match. Yeah, I, Adam Cole, I'm going to go with Adam Cole because um, he, he – He's done an amazing job uh, in become, being the leader of Undisputed Era. And I'd rather have Adam Cole win over Pat McAfee because um, Adam Cole, he, he kept it short and simple this week. He said, I'm going to take you down in NXT TakeOver, and there's nothing you can do about it because that's Undisputed. And I cannot wait to see how this match turns out. And then the last one, Keith Lee carrying Cross. I'm going to say... Keith Lee retains by some sort of via disqualification, but I think the rivalry is not over yet. I actually, I, I kind of agree with you on that. I could see somebody getting involved with this match and causing Keith Lee to win by disqualification. Because I don't think Karrion Cross is ready to be the champion just yet. I think they should develop him a little bit more as a character and show different sides that we've been seeing of Karrion Cross lately and all the promos he's been doing. His screen time, his screen time on these promos have been amazing. And I love the effects that they put in the uh in Karrion Cross's promos. Those are very well done. Yeah. Cuz I'm I'm an effects person myself cuz I I'm actually learning some of that stuff in college, so it's it's really cool to see how they put this stuff together. Yeah, it's interesting for sure. But please, I hope everybody enjoys TakeOver tonight. Alex, let's get to our finishing moves, man. What you got? Uh, My finishing move is, so I was on Twitter yesterday or the day before, and I was was watching a video on YouTube where Adam Cole and, uh, and, um, not he, I forget his name, man. I would know if I saw it. He's, he goes by Prince Pretty. Tyler Breeze? Tyler Breeze, yeah. Adam Cole and Tyler Breeze were doing a YouTube video, and it was very interesting. They were playing a WWE Legends card game, so I tweeted, haha, that's like amazing. I would love to see more of uh, Adam Cole and Tyler Breeze do videos like this, and surprisingly, he t- he actually like liked my tweet and retweeted it, so that was really cool because it was so unexpected, and it, it happened like probably 10 minutes after I tweeted it. So that was really cool. Cool though. That's cool. For me, my finishing move this week is it's a stacked weekend. You have AW dynamite tonight. You have NXT th- take over 30 tonight. And then tomorrow you have WWE summer slam. So there's a lot to digest. And then next week, uh, Alex and I are going to recap summer struggle for new Japan. So that's going to be next week as well. And then the week after that, you have all out. That la- September fifth, Alex and I are going to are going to preview. So that's going to be really exciting. I can't wait for just the um, the amount of wrestling that's coming up the next couple of weekends is huge. Yeah, it's, it's, it's going to be massive on on a big global scale. It's been very dry the last few weeks. There hasn't been much to really look forward to, um, you know. So. You know, for us to be able as wrestling fans to watch that, it's really been big. And look, just excited for it in itself. All right, guys, before we go, like I said, please don't forget to check us out on the Worldwide Sports Radio Network. Uh, You know, Alex and I are on every Saturday at 12 o'clock, but there's other programs too. You got Wise Guys, you got the Caged MMA, Down to the Wire. Yep, Below the Mic. Uh, you know, you you know the BS Sports Show. You have every single thing. If if you're you know the the New York Jets podcast show. If if you like sports, not just wrestling. If you like other sports too, we have content for every single sport out there in the country going on in the world today. Pretty much, and we're just growing. Also, don't forget to check out the Weekend Crunch with Arrow Marks and former NFL player Eric Coleman. Every Saturday night, you don't want to miss that. It's a great show between the two of them. The banter back and forth between them is awesome. Um, I know how hard they've been working on that show. It's been great. But, you know, again, we we apologize for, you know, the guests not being on today. But, look, that's okay. We still made – we still had a great show. We still had lots to talk about. We had to rush through some of the topics because there was so much to preview and talk about just for this weekend alone. 
that we usually didn't give our long drawn out answers that we normally would give. But again, uh, so much to do and so little time as they say. So, but it was a great show. We had a great time today. Alex, my friend, always a pleasure. Enjoy the rest of your weekend. Try to enjoy getting going back to college. I could see, you know, how tired you are. Yeah, I'm like a bit rusty from uh, all the uh, classwork I've been doing. So it's kind of like taking a little bit of effect. That's all right. You'll get back into it. You'll get into a routine and then you'll get back to normal. Uh, You know, look, for me, I have two more weeks of summer left for me. And then I'm a teacher and I go back into the school buildings. God, God, pray, pray for me. (laughs) I don't get COVID at that point because it's scary. Yeah, it is. It's very, Uh, it's very scary. No, but, uh, we want to thank all the fans out there for listening and watching us every Saturday. Our viewership keeps getting, you know, keeps going up. So we're excited. Alex, again, man, have a great rest of your day. Have a wonderful weekend. Hope your father is also staying safe out there in DC with everything going on. Um, and again, like I said, tune in to everything here on the Worldwide Sports Radio Network. Thank you so much, everybody. Have a wonderful rest of your day. Enjoy NXT TakeOver 30 tonight. Enjoy AEW Dynamite tonight. Enjoy WWE SummerSlam tomorrow. Don't forget, next week, we're going to recap Summer Struggle, and we're going to, you know, we'll also be previewing All Out coming up. So you're not going to want to miss that. This is Off the Mat on the Worldwide Sports Radio Network. For Alex Lowe's, I'm Josh Silverberg. Have a good rest of your weekend. It, it, it's the Worldwide Sports Radio Network. Radio Network.